Hello, this is Angela with Pargo's Permaculture. I'm standing in the front yard of my Portland, Oregon garden here in zone 8B. You can see my pawpaw, Asamina triloba, loaded with fruit. I mentioned recently in a video about how I wanna get a lot more serious about rainwater harvesting. And I will have down in the description a link to books I have read, some from the library and some that I've purchased, that have been helpful to me thus far in thinking about how to design to harvest the rainwater. Rainwater capture is something that has not been super important to me in the past, but the last three years show me that I need to get really serious about it. It's mid-October and the rainy season has not come back yet. When you live in a rainy climate where it rains nine months out of the year, rainwater capture may not seem like a high priority, and for me for a long time it really was not. But the last three summers have shown me that I need to shift my priorities. I need to make some shifts in my design in order to continue to be successful here. Much of the design of this garden is dealing with an excess of water for those nine months out of the year. It is channeling water places so I don't end up with boggy, sodden areas where I don't have my trees sitting in water, where they aren't having wet roots that they don't like where I improve drainage, where I funnel water away from my house. In fact, I have a blog post about how we dealt with water in our basement. That has been a lot of what I've designed for here. Yes, we have a rain garden in the backyard where I collect the rainwater off of the pergola in our backyard. And it's really efficient to store water in the soil and excess water from that I have gravel channels that help it overflow into the annual veggie beds but that is proving to be insufficient and I need to get serious about increased rainwater capture. So I am going to show you a few places around the garden where I'm thinking about what is my rainwater collecting potential. Brad Lancaster says, think about harvesting the rainwater. When you live somewhere where there is a dearth of water, you are not only harvesting the crops, you are first harvesting the rainwater so you can grow the crops. And that is the chain of thinking that we need to have. If we want to be successful in harvesting food, we must first harvest the rainwater. So even though for me, nine months out of the year, I have an excess of water, the three months of the most intensive part of the growing season, I have no rain at all. And with hotter, drier summers, and look at mid-October, no rain, the ground is very hard. It should have been rainy by now, the temperatures should not be in the mid 80s like they are right now. In fact, we went hiking at the coast yesterday because I needed to escape the 86 degree mid-October temperatures. Because I'm seeing this recurring weather pattern of hotter, drier summers, late return of the rainy season, I need to think more seriously about changing my design, tweaking it so that I continue to be effective. Permaculture is not stagnant. If our climate is changing, we need to change our design so that our gardens continue to be really resilient and strong and productive, right? So I'm gonna show you around some places in my garden where I'm thinking about what is my potential for harvesting the rainwater and what am I gonna invest in and what's that gonna look like? I am very lucky here that my yard, you can see the street is behind me here. My yard has a downhill slope from the street all the way through my property downhill. So I have the, blessing of gravity assisting me all the way through my garden. The only place I would have to think about pumping water uphill is here in the front yard, although I'm capturing a ton of water coming in off the street. So where else can I capture water from? There's the passive capture from the cul-de-sac across the street, from the houses uphill across the street for me that runs into my front yard. I have a swale in front of my front bed to capture that water. Where else can I passively collect the water and where can I more actively collect the water? What changes do I need to make to my system in order to have water that I can utilize throughout the summer? There is a male hummingbird who is real ticked that I am in his territory and he keeps buzzing me. Maybe you'll be able to see him in frame here, but he keeps he keeps uh, letting me know he's not happy that I'm here. So let me show you around a few places in the garden and talk about what I'm thinking about, what my budget is. And also please check out that down in the description, I'm gonna link to the books that I have read, either purchased or gotten from the library and have found useful thus far in changing the way that I'm thinking about rainwater capture, changing the way I'm thinking about caring for my garden, a garden that used to be very self-sufficient and required basically no watering in the summer. I think if I'm gonna to continue to be productive, especially with my annual veggies, I need to change my plans. And that means I need to change my thinking in order to craft new strategies that are gonna work for me. So let me show you around. 
The first thing that I need to do is to calculate my water catchment potential off my roof here and off other structures as well. You can see our pergola here, which a few years ago, we had a metal roof installed on it and it really, really collects a ton of water. I currently store that water in the ground in our rain garden, but you can see here all of that non-porous surface, you need to calculate the square footage before you can determine what size rain tanks you need. I didn't have to calculate when it was going into the ground and then overflowing into my annual veggie beds. I'm pretty sure two large tanks are going to go here in my narrow side garden. I'm going to take out that elderberry and probably first take cuttings of it and root it elsewhere in the garden. But this is where we have our dry well here. This is a very wet, soggy part of the yard as it is. And I'm thinking of paving this area and setting two tanks along the side here to collect water. For a long time, we've collected rainwater here into a clawfoot bathtub for our duck pond, but there is extra roof capture that I'm not utilizing, so I could set up a tank next to the duck pond, and that water would go out to the annual veggie garden. I don't want to forget about my brand new shed, which has all of that rainwater capture potential as well. Along the back here, I have a space to put tanks, potentially some large ones, and then I wouldn't have to cart them through my backyard. And I already have a really nice firm surface here that I'm not really utilizing for much else. Folks have a lot of opinions about collecting rainwater runoff off of an asphalt roof. This water is already hitting my roof and running down into my garden. I'm not using it for potable water. Yes, I have not gotten the windows in my greenhouse yet, but I am looking to put some small tanks behind this roof as well to collect water for the greenhouse plants themselves. Right off the bat, measuring your square footage of your roof space and calculating your capture potential is really important. That is the first thing before you can decide what size tanks to get and where to put them. You need to start with assessing what is your potential in your garden to capture rainwater. Quick look at one of the issues I'm dealing with. How do I get a 1500 gallon tank back through my mature trees without doing some serious pruning or removing some? So maybe it's a little hard to see here, but this is actually a raised bed up on a mound. And after looking at the Kailash Eco Village tour, I'm really thinking about how I might change these front yard beds from raised beds to sunken beds in order to better collect the water. My Fijoa doesn't mind a dearth of rain. My Papa needs plenty of rain to produce big fruit. Okay, thanks for watching. I have been talking with my neighbor about like, what is a good investment in my home right now, right? What is the best way to use any surplus resources I have toward increasing my resilience, toward increasing the productivity of my system and increasing the quality of life for our family? And for me, I think rainwater capture is the way to go. It's not solar panels. My roof doesn't face the right direction. It's not um, thinking about refinishing my hardwood floors, even though they really need to be refinished because they are completely torn up. I think my pennies need to go toward rainwater capture right now. And I'm going to show you that process, what it looks like. My big problem here is going to be how do I get some of these tanks on site? The tanks themselves are not all that expensive, but <clears throat> the delivery is very expensive. And I'm also trying to think about how do I move them and situate them when I already have mature trees, right? When I already have large trees that I have to kind of wedge these tanks in. So I'm going to be doing more measurements. I'm going to be doing more planning and thinking about realistic ways to get large quantity rainwater capture. Now, one of my neighbors has invested in huge systems, so she doesn't have to have any city water for any of her property, including post water and I'm just looking for irrigation water and water for my poultry not looking for water for my household at this point in time I'm gonna stay hooked up to city water for that it just doesn't seem feasible for me the amount of money it would cost in order to get a sustainable and sufficient potable water system for my family of six it would be um, incomprehensible to me how much money I would have to spend in order to do that. Um, especially when I don't have that large of a property to begin with, where I don't have space for enormous rainwater catchment. So I'm going to stick to irrigation for my garden for that purpose, but it's still going to be a sizable investment. So when you are thinking about how can I make plans? How can I save? How can I strategize to increase the food security, increase my family's security, and reduce my overall expenses? Do some number crunching. Do some measuring around your garden. Think about what your rainwater harvesting potential is. Invest in some books. 
there is so much good information out there on rainwater capture. You do not have to reinvent the wheel here. Lots of folks are experts who have done it for decades and can impart their wisdom to you and use the library or check out the list of books below. Get educated. Think about what your budget is. Think about the changes you will need to make to your garden. Like I'm gonna have to remove some trees and shrubs in order to make this happen. Think about what sacrifices you're gonna have to make and how those sacrifices will pay you back in the end, not just you, but also your whole system. Thank you for watching today and I will be back very soon for my permaculture garden. I really hope the next time I come back, it's rainy and I have to have a rain jacket or stand under the pergola because it's just pouring. Um, even though there's no rain in the forecast, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you know, before the end of October, the rains finally return. I hope you're staying well and safe and I'll be back.